So this is lecture 33 of ECE 503. And so in today's lecture, we're going to be revisiting AR lattices and ARMA lattice ladder structures. Okay? So this is something that we've seen before. And what we're going to delve into is how this, how this can be used in things like the prediction stuff that we've been looking at over the last several lectures. All right? So in 32, lecture 32, we saw Levinson-Durbin, right? And prior to that, we looked at AR, autoaggressive, right? Um, moving average, MA, and autoaggressive moving average, ARMA models for performing things like prediction, right? We looked at, uh, in particular, how we can uh, take a, a process and make it whitened, right, to, to go from a correlated state into an uncorrelated state, and vice versa. And what we're going to look at now is, can we set up these filters? So we looked at the transfer function strictly in terms of difference equations. Can we set things up to be in terms of a lattice or a lattice ladder, right? So remember what a lattice did, right? It's mostly an all-pole realization, and the lattice ladder is a combination of poles and zeros. What we're going to be looking at here is very briefly revisiting ARMA, MA, and AR, and at the same time, the lattice and ladder, lattice ladder structures to sort of tie the two together, okay? Including sort of that linkage between those coefficients, and the process is the same. From going from uh, difference equations and the uh, transfer function and the coefficients to reflection coefficients, those Ks that we saw in the lattice and lattice ladder structures. Okay? So, several lectures ago, this could almost be something like, um, uh, how can I say it? Like, you know, uh, from Star Wars, like several lectures ago, and, you know, and it just like pans to the back and everything. We can create a linear predictor using a transfer function. No, just kidding. I'll, 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 I'll turn off the Star Wars uh, voice now. So, so what happens is uh, we saw this. We saw how that transfer function, right, of the linear predictor, a, p of z, is equal to 1 plus a, tr a string, if you will, of coefficients, a, p of k, and they all have different delay elements, right, to reflect that, uh, that structure. What it turns out is that we can represent, as p goes to infinity, the order of that predictor. If it goes to infinity, we can represent this in terms of okay, fpz is equal to ap of z times xz. Right? And what this process does is it produces a white noise sequence. So why is this the case? Because what happens is the white noise, or just white signal in general, means that it's uncorrelated. Right? So we can create from this filter we can make a sequence, an output sequence that is uncorrelated, and th therefore the prediction error, which we hope, is also going to be uncorrelated. So why is this useful? So first of all, we can use this AP of Z to create wide sense stationary random processes from white noise. So we call that the innovation process. So remember, we had the case where we had white noise, let's make a random process that has WSS characteristics using this filter. We call it the innovation filter. And if the inverse of the innovation filter, in turn, if we feed in a signal to it, it will produce white noise. So that's what um, lecture 32 and 31 were all about. Lecture 30, on the other hand, was about random processes in general and this mystical unicorn called white sense stationary processes. Now, if we have an innovation process, right? So innovation process in this case, so we have like, you know, this white noise, we want to create like anything. And I think I discussed this in my office hours earlier today with several students from this class about why this is important. Suppose I want to create a random process with very specific characteristics. What do I do? I feed in white noise. That's not difficult to do. MATLAB, it's easy, right? You just choose RAND N, right? No, uh, yeah, RAND N. So uh, that case, it's a white Gaussian noise. And so I just feed in this uncorrelated noise into this filter, and out comes a random process with, let's say, specific correlation properties that I'm looking for. 
perhaps mean as well. Like, so I can craft, based on this uncorrelated noise, anything that I want. It's really cool, right? So, if the input to this guy is an, is an ARP, right? So autoregressive P, uh, order P function, then what happens is we can recover it uh, fr from that. We can, we can recover the white noise process, random process from it. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at filter structures. We're going to look at lattice and lattice ladder structures in order to recover that signal from there. So, so what happens is instead of doing you know, the, the rational, uh, you know, we have a polynomial in the numerator and polynomial in the denominator to represent that filter, we're going to use lattice and lattice ladders instead. So just as before, remember the all-pole system? Remember? So this h of z is equal to 1 over 1 plus the summation from 0 to p. So it's a pth order system, right? a, p, k, z to the minus k. So it's all poles. All we have is poles. All the zeros, they're, they're, they don't exist. It's only poles that are defined in this structure. And what we want to do Right? If we write out the difference equation, we're essentially looking at past values of the output plus current input to give us current output. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards. Just as before, when we had an all-pole system, and we had, essentially, we, we associated the current input with the pth stage of the forward prediction branch, the top guy here, and what happens is, we let y of n equal to 0 stage. So here's fp, and then every time we move forward, so pth, pth minus 1, pth minus 2, all the way to 0. And that's going to produce the output, right? So it's kind of like the opposite of the forward predictor because it's like, uh, in this case, because it's an all-pole realization. And what we did, just like what we did before with the all-pole realization and um, you know, the lattice structure is that there's an iterative process if we st where we can start off of fp and then work backwards to get us every, every reflection coefficient, every one of these kps, kp, kp minus 1, k, all the way to k2, k1, and then, well, 0, there is no reflection coefficient. And the, the, stra the strategy is follows. So let x of n equal to fp of n. And then, iteratively, we work our way down. The next stage, the f m minus 1 of n is equal to f n of n minus k m g m minus 1 n minus 1. And the, the g m minus 1 n minus 1, what is that? That's our backward predictor, right? So forward predictions f, backward predictor is g, and the backward predictor is the bottom branch there, right? So what ends up happening is, and then the bottom predictor is represented by this iterative structure here, and we initialize everything. Well, no, we don't initialize everything. Y of n is equal to f naught of n and equal to g naught of n. So given all these variables, what we can do is we can bootstrap this such that we can iteratively create the remaining k's. Right, the reflection coefficients for this lattice structure. Okay. So, in, in the case of the ARMA lattice ladder, what happens is this assumes that we have both zeros and we have poles present. This is exactly like what we looked at several lectures ago with, with the lattice ladder structure, where we essentially have a polynomial in the numerator, a polynomial in the denominator of order Q and order P, respectively. And so what, what we end up getting is, again, similar to the lattice, right? We have pth stage, pth minus 1 stage, all the way to stage 1. And then at every stage, we drop off the value at exactly that point, multiplied by coefficient beta 0 all the way to beta p, sum them together, and that gives us the output. That gives us both the numerator and, denom and denominator realization, where every stage is represented by this lattice structure here. So at the end of the day, what we get, okay, that h of z, is essentially the backward predic prediction divided by x of z times the betas, sum them across all q's to give us h of z. 
right? And what happens is, in turn, we can represent that x, right? We, 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 first of all, what do we know about f of z and g, uh, sorry, f naught of z and g naught of z? They're identical, right? So we, we can add those two. We're doing nothing, right? At the same time, what do we know about x of z? It's equal to f p of z. So we replace that. So we have this nice, cool relationship where we have essentially the ratio of the kth backward prediction stage divided by the zeroth backward prediction stage, and then multiply that by the zeroth forward prediction stage divided by the pth forward prediction stage. So it's this nice ratio. If you have these two separate sets of values, the ratio of them, and then one's inverted re re relative to the other, multiply them together, and sum them across all Q, will give us H of Z. Right? So we don't really have to worry about what X is. We don't have to worry about what Y is. It's entirely, okay. <laughs> it's entirely represented in terms of G's and F's. So when we evaluate this at the end of the day, it turns out that these betas, they give us CQ of Z, right? It gives us this guy here, the numerator. So at the end of the day, we have that relationship. And this bottom guy here, this AP of Z, it also comes out in a wash. So that's how we got this guy in turn. And the power spectral density of the output of this process is equal to you know, the, the variance of the white noise. And then this guy comes from the magnitude squared of h of z. So let, let's go back. So what was really important from the past couple of lectures is this. So I'm, I'm just going to be kind of sloppy here. But what ended up happening is, suppose I have h of omega. I'm going to do it in omega space, right? And we have a random process, right? And let's say it, it has a frequency represent. No. No. Let's do x of n. Yeah. Let's, and I'm going to put w of n, right? So suppose that it has an autocorrelation, right? Yes. Hmm. And, and I know, my, my notation's a little bit sloppy, right? We know, so let's say we have this guy here. So it has a frequency, you know, uh, sort of a, four, this, a Fourier transform pair, right, which can be represented, in this case, right? And then we know that these guys are going to be related to each other by the following. Magnitude squared. So what's interesting to note here? So first of all, this guy here, we know in the case of the Arma lattice ladder, so we know that, in this case, h of omega, or in this case, I believe we're also using Yeah, we're using z, but I'm, I'm going to choose omega just, just for fun. So what happens is it's cqz over apz. CQ, so I'm going to just choose omega over AP omega. And we also know, so in this case, I actually, I think I messed things up a little bit. So this guy here, so in fact, it doesn't really matter. What ends up happening is when we have this, what is the magnitude squared of H omega squared? That's going to be equal to the magnitude squared of CQ omega squared over AP omega squared. So that's how we, pl we, we can plug that back in. Now, when, uh, what happens is whenever we talk about whitening filter, 
or white process. Okay, random process. What this tells me is somewhere there is a white noise RP, which means that there is an autocorrelation that is equal to a delta, which means there is a power spectral density that, oy, that is equal to a constant across all frequencies. Okay? So what ends up happening is that with this information, if I said white noise, filter, uh, white noise process and I have this guy here, this is all I need in order to take, let's say in this case, I, ha I, have the, I have the white noise at this end. And just like in question three of last week's problem set, problem set 11, it's like, what's this guy's PSD? What is this guy's power spectral density? So, so what ends up happening is, what do we know about the power spectral density here? Flat. What do we know about this guy? This guy can have this power, uh, this, this guy, the magnitude squared of h of omega, might have that shape. So what must the power spectral density of x of n be equal to? It must be equal to its inverse. So if we have a flat output, the magnitude squared has that profile, the input must be the opposite in order to cancel it out. Now, if we go to the lecture slides, keep that. Here, it's the exact opposite. So I have a system here, right? So in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cre create a process from noise. So CQF over APF, right, F in this case, magnitude squared. And what is this guy? This guy's our constant. This guy is the variance of our white noise. And he's our power spectral density. So this guy here, that's our constant. That's across all frequency. What is that? Let, let's see. So this guy, this guy, is the constant across all frequency. Okay? So, what happens is I feed this into CQ of omega over AP of omega, and that's going to produce my <coughs> X of N. So, that's, so, in, so in this case, how do we get that? So, SXX of omega is going to be equal to the magnitude squared of CQ omega AP omega squ magnitude squared sigma W squared. So that, that's from the white RP. This is from the transfer function, function which is based on lattice ladder And that's, and that's going to be my output PSD of the system. All right? So in a nutshell, that's what all this, um, like, you know, this is all about. The lattice ladder is just another way of representing my transfer function. Otherwise, it's the same sort of math. You know, input PSD, which if it's white, is flat spectrally. And then the output should be whatever shape by the, um, by, the, by the filter. All right. So with that, um, yeah, in a nutshell, that is lecture 33.